but I know the favor of the Lord is with me. It is settled that I am blessed. It is settled that I am blessed. of the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Last week we were in Maryland where we had a very awesome time with the Lord. Amen. But I was missing all of you. Are you happy I'm back? I am happy I am back. Hallelujah. Amen. He had an induction service in Maryland where over 100 people were inducted into office, pastors, ministers, and deacons. And from the latter rain center, we're blessed to have 22 people inducted into office. <laughs> Amongst them, we had one promotion from minister to senior minister. <laughs> minister Tony, very faithful, very hardworking man who deserves it. How many of you believe that he deserves it? We will introduce the rest after service. And also we had one of our, our own who was inducted into office as a pastor. And as, a, as tradition, and formality today our new inducted pastor is going to break the bread of life for us the person of lady pastor theresa young all known since i came to this church she has been very very faithful and we thank God that her promotion or her appointment did not come even from the house, but it was seen outside the house that Apostle Jerome himself identified her service, her commitment, her love for the things of the Lord, and, and then appointed her into the position of a pastor. And uh, about a couple of months ago, but last Sunday was when she was formally inducted into office. Church, let's welcome our dear... Lady Pasta, Lady Young. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for this wonderful day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. That we should rejoice and be glad in it. If you are rejoicing and if you are glad, put your hands together. sing this song that is so dear to my heart it's a song that I love so much it's a simple song that we sing all the time but I love it because when I look at where I was and where I am today it's been only by grace 
more than my mouth can testify. More than my mind can comprehend. See, I've seen the wonders of your grace. I'm so sure.
we thank God for grace. I don't know about you, but as for me, I can see and I can tell and I know for sure it's been by his grace. Hallelujah. If we should go into my family background, you, you, you even believe I, I'm the 13th born. Hallelujah. But by grace picked me and I give glory to God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, this morning, I would like to start by saying thank you to God for how far he has brought me. I bless the name of the Lord for his faithfulness and his goodness towards me and my family. I thank God for seeing me worthy to call me to do this. I would like to thank God and honor the Apostle General, the founder of Royal House Chapel. And his beautiful wife, Mama Rita, for the lives through which we are all here today. Hallelujah. I would also like to thank our Papa. Please don't sit down. Please be on your feet and help me. Help me thank Reverend Joe Chum. church my life has never been the same hallelujah reverend joe i salute you thank you because if a position one can say it but if you say no it won't happen so thank you so much for believing in me mama betty thank you for your support Minister, God bless you. God bless you, ministers and pastors in the house. And God bless each and every one of you for your support and your love. I remember when Apostle Genoa said it that day, when I went home and watched the video, I was blown away. People were crying. People were overexcited for me. I thank you all so, so much. Amen. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I also want to thank God and thank Apostle General and Mama Rita again, Mama Betty and Reverend Joe again on behalf of all the newly inducted. Please, if you are here, be on your feet with me. All the newly inducted. This appointment. And, and we, it's our prayer that we will not disappoint you, but rather do the work with more zeal. Amen. Amen. This morning, I have a very short exhortation. I have, <laughs> I have entitled a heart of service. Somebody say a heart of service. Heart of service. Oh, say it again. A heart of service. Heart of service. Amen. Amen. We as Christians in the beginning, God created us for the purpose of loving and serving him. God created us for the purpose of loving and serving him. Now we can serve in various ways to bring glory to his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As Christians, we need to identify what pleases God, our Father, first. What pleases him? It's to love him. It's to serve him. And sometimes when, when we say we love God and we serve God, it's not because we say to God we love him. God will love you. God will love you. But because of what we do unto others. If we say we love God but we don't love somebody else, then we don't know God and we don't know what we are doing. Hallelujah. So we can only love God and serve God through people. We are all here serving Apostle General's vision. We are serving Reverend Joe's vision. But it is all to, to towards or to the love that we all have for God. If it wasn't for that, if you feel like you are, your head hurts, you will sleep. But for the love of God, you keep pushing and you keep coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> serving God shouldn't be done for recognition, number one. If we say we are serving God, we shouldn't do it because we want something from God. Serving God shouldn't be self-seeking. Serving God shouldn't be because we want something from him in return. 
I can tell you that when I came to this church, throughout the years of serving God, I did not pray for. I did not ask for anything. I didn't ask to be made a deacon. In fact, the day that they were going to make us deacons, when we found out, me and Lady Deacon Angela, we went quietly to Reverend Johnny and said, Rev, is there any way you can take our names out of the list? Because as for us, all we want to do is to serve. And Reverend Johnny said, if you have been found worthy for the calling, I cannot do that. Hallelujah. But because of service and by the grace of God, here I stand before you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I'm reading from New Living Translation. Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Live righteously and I will give you everything you need. If only we will serve God without asking him for this. We are, we are not serving God because we want twins. We are not serving God because we want a car. We are not serving God because we want to buy a house. We, you know, today's Christians, I believe that's, that's what some of us do. We go to church and we are always at prayer, prayer uh, uh, meetings. We are always fasting and praying because of what we want. Not because of what, not because of God or what he has done for us through his son, Jesus. I am here this morning to encourage all of us, especially the newly inducted leaders, that even though we were serving before and it's through our service that we have come this far, let us not stop, but keep on to do the work to glorify God. Hallelujah. Amen. Heart of man. And indeed, he rewards service. You will not do anything for God and he will not reward you. Then maybe you were not doing it well, you know. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter number 3, 23 to 24, that whatever it is that we do, we should do it as we are doing it unto the Lord. Not unto the choir leader. If you are leading worship, please, you are not leading it for me. If you are ushering, do it as you are doing it unto the Lord. Because the Lord is watching. Let's, let us do it and serve with a heart of service. Hallelujah. We are told the family gathered. We are told about the story of, of, of Samuel. The story of David. And the Bible tells that, that God rejected Saul. And after God rejecting Saul, God searched through and searched through and searched through and searched through and didn't find anybody except a young shepherd. And I was just asking myself, why? Of all the people in the world and of all the people in Israel, God didn't find anybody. God didn't see anybody fit to take over from Saul. But a young shepherd who was not thinking who was not praying, who was not asking to be made a king. The guy was just serving. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please, if you are here, serve like there's no tomorrow. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel 16. I read from verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. Somebody say, may I not be rejected? Somebody say, I will not be rejected. With a diligent heart. And I will serve with obedience. In the name of Jesus. He said, I've rejected him of king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil. And go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there. For I have selected one of his sons to be my king. For I have selected one of his sons to be my king. Somebody say, God, if you are looking for anybody to select. If you are looking for anybody to use. May I be selected. Or somebody say, may I be selected. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, but Saul asked, 
how can I do this? If Saul hears this, he, if Saul hears about this, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a haifa with you and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. Verse 4 says, so Samuel did as the Lord instructed. Somebody made the Lord help us to obey his instructions in the name of Jesus. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came, trembling to meet him. What's wrong? They asked. Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons, and he invited them to the sacrifice. You know the funny thing? The one that God sent to go to anoint was not even there. When they were doing the purification, David was not there. I pray that whatever is for you shall wait for you. When you are the chosen one, you will not go through the normal thing. The, the normal thing that people go through. The purification, this young guy was not there. But he was the one the Lord has chosen to use. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, when they arrived, Saul took a look at Eliab and thought, mm, surely this is the Lord's anointed. I'm sure as soon as Samuel saw Eliab, he's like, mm, this is a fine guy with a fine face and a fine height with broad shoulders. Samuel thought, oh, this is the Lord's anointed. But verse 7 says, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. Somebody say, I will not be rejected. Say, I will not be rejected. In the name of Jesus. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. This is why I selected, I entitled my sermon, A Heart of Service. God was not looking for the height. He was not looking for the freshness of Eliab. God was looking at the heart. A heart that was ready to serve him. Verse 8 says, Then Jesse told him, Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Jesse summoned Shemiah. But Samuel said, neither is the Lord, neither is this the one the Lord has chosen. In the same way, seven of Jesse's sons passed or were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, are these all the sons you have? Are these all the sons you have? Then the father said, there is still the youngest. Somebody said the youngest. The youngest. There is still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the field watching the goats. He's out in the field doing what? He's out in the field doing what? Seven. Then someone said, send for him at once. Someone said, we will not sit down to eat. Somebody may, some people not sit down. Until your elevation comes, may somebody not sit down. Until your bosses promote you, may they not have peace. May they wait for you to come. We will not sit down. He said, we will not sit down. We will not eat. May somebody go on hunger strike until they give you what is due you. I said, may somebody go on hunger strike until they give you what is due you. The king could not sleep that night because there was a reward that was due the man of God. So may somebody not sleep until your promotion is given to you. Yes, Hallelujah. So just to send for him. The Bible says that he was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes 
And the Lord said, this is the one. The Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. Somebody say, I am the one. I'm the Lord's anointed. I am the Lord's chosen one. I am the one the Lord has chosen to use for his glory. Hallelujah. David in all this, David while all this was going on, was in the field taking care of his father's flocks. And in those days, flocks were taken care of not by the sons, but by servants or in today's world, slaves. Slaves were supposed to take care of the sheep or, or, or relatives. The Bible tells us that Jacob took care of his uncle's sheep. The Bible also tells us that um, uh, Moses took care of his father-in-law's sheep. But in this case, it wasn't the oldest that was in the field taking care of his father's sheep. It was the youngest, a teenage boy. The guy didn't care about anything but serving. He was in the field taking care of his father's ship. ships. David was re always ready to serve. Even after he was anointed. After he was anointed. King in place of Saul. He went to serve Saul. In today's world. Knowing that you have been anointed in place of somebody. Hey. When you go. The way you feel big and feel like you are all that. You will go and call people to come and help you. The guy had brothers. He, would have, he could have called his brothers and said, let us go and dethrone this guy. I'm sure the Lord has anointed me. King. Instead of Saul. But David served. It was through his service that brought him through or brought him closer to the throne he was supposed to sit on. Hallelujah. I'm going to jump to verse 19. Verse 19 says, so th we all know the story. Saul was, was rejected. A spirit was tormenting him. And then one of his servants said, there's a guy, service. There's a guy who can play a harp. And then Saul sent for David. So verse 19 says, so Saul sent messengers to Jesse to say, send me your son David, the shepherd. Jesse responded by sending David to Saul along with a young goat, a donkey loaded with bread and wine skin, full of wine. So David went to Saul and began serving him. The Bible says in verse 21, so David went to Saul and began serving him. Somebody say, God, give me a serving heart. Say, my father, my father, give me a serving heart. No matter how, how high you take me in life. Saul loved him very much. And David became his armor bearer. So you know what happens when you serve? People love you without a reason. People begin to love you without a reason. Since I've, since I've been in this church, people come here and they do me good. They do things for me without me asking. Not because I did anything for them, but because of service, because they saw, or because of what they have seen me do. Mama Justine will cook from Connecticut, not in New York, and drive their food to me. Why? Because of service. God. Service will cause people to love you. You don't really have to do anything. For people to love you just because you are seriously serving God God will cause people to love you people take my children on vacation they buy tickets and will take my children to vacation I've not I've never taken them to vacation but the places they've been to I've never been there not because I did anything for these people but because they have always seen me in the house of God serving I pray that God will give you a serving heart It was through the act of service that David was introduced to the whole world. The whole world came to know David because of his service. 
It was because he sent, he was sending replies to his family. And through that, he came in contact with Goliath. I don't know in which capacity you find yourself serving in the house of God. But today, I encourage you to do it wholeheartedly. Because there is a reward in serving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Another story I would like to share with you was um, Joseph. Joseph, you all know, was the last part one of his father, Jacob. And Jacob, out of service, happily going to serve his brother food, going to check on them. He encountered what their brother had planned against him. But through his service, whatever they planned did not work against him. Because of his heart. I don't know the heart you carry. I don't know the heart with which you sit here this morning. But I pray that it will be a steadfast heart. I pray that it will be a heart of service. In the name of Jesus. I would like to take this opportunity to talk to all the newly inducted. That sometimes when we are promoted, we stop doing what we were doing. And then we begin to feel like we, we, we have arrived. But I want to encourage all of us to do the work and do it well. If you are ushering, please do it well. If you are singing, please, I'm going to sing well. Amen. I'm going to worship well. I said I'm going to worship well. And I'm going to sing praise well. I'm not going to stop because today I'm a pastor. It, it just means, it, it, these titles that we have been given is to just encourage us to do what we are doing well, but not to stop and feel like we, we are all that. Hallelujah. Amen. When Joseph was promoted, Joseph did not stop serving. It was through his service, the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 39, that his master put him in charge. His master made him a head over his household, over his property and everything. I believe before Joseph got to the house, there were other servants there. I believe other servants were serving. But because of his heart, the master saw that. And the Bible says clearly that God was with him. Because God was with him, everything he did prospered in his hands. So if God is with you and if you have a serving heart, God blesses everything you do. And everything that you do prosper. And because of that, his master promoted him to be in charge over everything that he had. I pray that God will give us a heart of service. Amen. Joseph continually served through his service. Uh, 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 false accusation came in. So I want to encourage us, the newly inducted leaders, that sometimes in our service, people will hurt us. People will lie on us. People will step on us. People, will, Some people will do it unconsciously. And some will do it intentionally. Some will intentionally want to hurt you. But with all that went on in Joseph, Joseph's life, he didn't stop serving. When he went to the prison, it was through his service. Serving and interpreting dreams brought him to the throne where the Lord had prepared for him to be. So service also brings us closer to fulfilling our destiny. When we the Lord will give us favor before people. And when we serve, it brings us closer to fulfilling our destiny. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the, the, the fact that Joseph was so seriously serving, he would have missed the time his brothers came in. His brothers had planned and didn't want to see what God wanted to do with his life. But even after he was put on the throne, the Bible tells us that this guy was in the field making sure that everybody got some because there was famine and because God had given him the grace to interpret dreams, the king put him there as the prime minister to see to it that everything is done well and during that time somebody said during that time during that time his brothers came and that which they did not want to see happen that which they did not want to want, want to see come to pass in joseph's life it came to pass 
Can you imagine if Joseph had decided that now I'm here, I'm, I'm the prime minister, let me just relax in, 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 in my palace, relaxing, cross his leg and drinking wine. He would have missed that very thing he dreamt about. His brothers bowing down before him. He would have missed it. So if we refuse to serve God, we will miss that which God had planned for us. Hallelujah. But Joseph continually served. And I can say to you, this morning, I can share with you my personal testimony that I have never let anything stop me. Never. Your facial expression will not stop me. Your attitude will not stop me. Your insult will not stop me. You can even call me a witch. I will still come. Normal, because even Jesus, they called him a demon, or he, they said that he was using a demonic spirit to heal people. How can you use a demonic spirit to cast out a demon? So if people falsely accuse you, it is normal. Somebody say, it's okay, cry. It's, it's okay. I will still be here. I encourage you. Please don't stop. Don't let he didn't greet me. She didn't greet me. Stop you. Please. This person doesn't like me. This person doesn't like me. Don't let that stop you from serving God. If only you truly believe that you are here in this church to serve God. Don't let it stop you. Because I have not, I did not allow anybody to, oh, disgrace, don't let it stop you. Because sometimes when we are serving God, we go through shame and we go through disgrace. I remember one time I was leading, all my life you have been faithful. This is a song that I sing all the time. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I don't know what happened that day. The way I was disgraced, it's like I've never sung that. I've ne it's like. I don't know. Hey, people were laughing. Choristers. God is my witness. Some of the choristers. <laughs> I said, hey. I saw it with my eyes. The Bible says that, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. at me all you want I will be here and I will sing again and I, and I will sing again hallelujah oh I saw them choristers when somebody is singing it doesn't go well I, if, I feel like it's me that thing has happened to then no, my, I don't want to speak sorry Amen. Amen. I, I'll feel so bad. But David said, if, if it's people that I know hate me, that would have been okay. But my own acquaintance, people I am singing with, you can laugh at me, oh, madam. You can laugh. But I will still come and sing. Oh, Pastor will yell at me. In, in, during service, I will still come. <laughs> Amen. Because whatever he's doing is because he wants the best for me. Yep. It's who, who, who did he meet? <laughs> 901. Because I, I didn't know this man. I, I didn't know he was like that. Small thing, I'm like woman like me this man I 
I'll just shake myself. And I said, me, I'm coming back. Whether you like it or not, I will still come. I will still sing. I will still serve. I encourage all of you, please. Like I said, sometimes it's, it's not people outside you. It's the same people you are doing the ushering with. Please don't let that stop you from serving God. <laughs> I remember one time, Mama Justine came to me and said, Hey, you this lady. I don't know how you do this. You are here leading worship. Please, when you are hurt, be like me. Me, I will cry it out. I won't let the pain stay. Because if it stays, you become bitter. And if you become bitter, you are wasting your time. You won't get anything from God. You won't get anything from God. You won't get anything. No. So don't allow bitterness to come in because of he said, she said, she did that, he did that. Continue to serve the Lord. I was, speak, I was talking to Esther yesterday and I was like, Esther. I can't tell you all the stories, but please, if anybody hurts you, go to them and talk to them, let it go. Or if you're like me, me, I don't like talking, you know, about stuff like that, like coming to you, let's, me, I'll cry it out. And the moment the, the, the tears come out, I'm done. Holding anything, let us serve God with a genuine heart. Let us serve God with a loving heart. Let us serve God with a kind heart. I have purpose in my heart that nothing, absolutely nothing, will stop me from serving God in this house in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll be done shortly. I would also like to share let's read the scriptures because I know that we all know these scriptures. Um, but I would like to share with us the story of Ruth also. Ruth came to Bethlehem and got married to the richest guy because of what? Because of sin. She was, she was hard working all right, but it wasn't because of that alone. Because of the heart that she carried. This woman, after losing her husband, decided to just follow her mother-in-law. But there were two people. There were two in-laws. But one of them decided to dedicate her life. To support. And to care. And to serve her mother-in-law. Ruth chapter 2. The Bible says that now there was a wealthy man, a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day, Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest. Let me go out to the field to pick up the stock of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do this. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters and it happened. She found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of, um, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked him, then Boaz asked his foreman, who is that young woman over here? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, She's the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain 
behind the harvesters. She has been hard working. She, she has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Believe it or not, if you are in the house of God serving, people are watching. It's like people can see. People can see everything that you're doing. You're coming and you're going. People can see. Nobody really stopped. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay right here with us. When you gather grain, don't go to any other field. Stay right behind the young women working in a field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men to treat you, to, to not treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drained from the well. Your service will bring you what you have not asked for. I said your service will bring you what you have not prayed for. Your service will bring you what is due you. In the name of Jesus. It was through her service that she became an ancestor. When you are checking the name or the genealogy of Jesus Christ, her name is there. But Ruth was from a place that was cursed. The Moabites were cursed by the Lord. But because of her service, because he, she followed Naomi to take care of her, God connected her to Boaz. God blessed her with prosperity. Your service will bring you prosperity. May your service in the house of the Lord bring you prosperity. May your service in the house of the Lord bring you that husband you have not even prayed for. That your heart so desire. May your service in the house of God open doors unto you. May your service bring you higher and higher like that of Ruth. May you be rewarded. When God called, when, 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 um, 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 David's son, the king, please help me. When Solomon took over, he didn't ask God. When God came to me and said, give me any, tell me anything you want, I will give you. Because of the heart he carried, he said to God, I only need wisdom to serve. I only need wisdom. Give me wisdom to serve these wonderful people that you have given unto me. I pray this day that as newly inducted, together with the old intact, may God give us wisdom to serve. To serve. May God give us strength to serve. May God give us emotional strength to serve. He said, I don't need anything else. If only you will give me wisdom to serve and because he did not ask for riches for himself because he, he did not ask for money God gave him all of it Amen. as I shared with you that seek ye the kingdom of God fails above all else and I'll give you everything you need when we serve God God will add everything that we need God will add everything I've heard testimonies of pastors people built houses for somebody built a house and just gave it to the pastor if only we will serve God with a diligent heart the Lord will reward us the Lord will raise men and women to be good to us to be a blessing unto us to favor us if only we will serve with a diligent heart the Lord will bless us Amen. in conclusion I want to share with us Serving benefits of service. Serving allows us to discover our spiritual gift. I didn't know I could stand here and do this. I didn't even know that I could sing. I didn't know. So our service helps us develop or helps us discover 
and develop our gifts and the talent that God has given us and is to be used to his glory. So number one, service helps us discover and develop our spiritual gift. <laughs> Amen. And it's to be used in the house of the Lord. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, that it says, compress the church to the human, we compress the church to the human body. Just like our bodies are made of many parts, serving specific, specific function, the church is made up of all of us so that together we can serve God and glorify his name. Number two, our service will cause us to experience miracles. Somebody say miracles. The Bible tells us that the first miracle Jesus Christ performed, guess who experienced it? The servants, the servants who were there, they were the only people that saw what Jesus did. They were the only people that saw that Jesus Christ turned the water into wine. Nobody else. People were happy drinking and saying, mm, this wine is good. This wine is better than the first one. What they did not know that a miracle had happened. So when you are busy serving God, you will experience miracles. It was only the servants who went to fetch the water that experienced it. I pray that as you serve God, you will experience miracles. Oh, I pray in your household, may you experience miracles on every side. In the name of Jesus. Three, serving God allows us to experience joy and peace that comes from obedience. When the Lord asks you to do something and you do it, the joy that comes with it is unexplainable, unspeakable joy. I pray that the Lord will give us the grace to obey his instructions. That through that, we will receive joy. Amen. Four, serving God helps us to be more, to be more, become or to be more or to become more like Jesus Christ. It helps us to be come more like Jesus when we are reading the word, when we are coming, when we are praying, it helps us to become like him, to begin to think like him, to begin to do things like him. Five, serving God surrounds us with other Christians who can help us follow Christ. Serving God helps us to encounter or meet people that will help us not only in our spiritual life but even in our, our our secular life even in our education in our family life service or serving will help us through service i have met some wonderful people in this church so serving god help us or god uses our service to connect us to people that can help us to our next level not only in church but in every area of our life our lives Serving God also increases our faith. My time is up. Serving God allows us to experience God's power, God's presence, and God's glory. This morning, I am here to encourage all of us. Please, whatever it is we are doing in the house of God, let us do it well. Let us do it with a diligent heart. Let us do it with a pure heart. And I know that the God who sees in secret, he will surely, surely reward us openly. You have been faithful, oh God. In all my life, you have been
if she could gather grain behind the harvesters, she has been she has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. So the man recommended that this woman is hard working. Yeah. This woman is doing it too much. This woman is selfless. I pray that may people identify you. Jesus. May Commend you yes, to the Lord. right people. Lord. Yes, Lord. I said, they recommend you to the yes, right Lord. people. Yes, Lord. You see, when you serve, when you serve, people will recommend you. Yes. I remember when I was in Maryland, all that I knew that I was just seven. I come, I do all that I'm supposed to do, make sure that when AG wanted somebody to come here, Reverend Emma said, Reverend Joe can be the one. And today, here I am. When you're seven, people are looking. I said, people are looking. Yes. Don't serve for reward. This lady has served. And like she said, she has cried. That sometimes, the way I'll give it to her, I don't even expect her to come to church. And the last, the last one she was talking about, that the woman spoke about, I gave it to her outside there. She went inside. After, so I thought she, she, was, she was going to lead the song. I thought, I was like, bitch, I think I was too hard though. <laughs> she finished crying, took the mic, and came to lead the song. Why would God reward such a person? Yes. Because she knew that I was looking for the goodness of God. And so we were in it together. And she was doing it for God, not to please me today. God has recognized. substance, serve with your time, serve with your deeds. One beautiful thing I like about my armor bearer, Nikina Penten, serves with his heart. There was a time he didn't have anything. So when we are going somewhere, when I buy water, I'll give him something to drink. Today, the Lord has blessed him and it hasn't changed the way he serves. One thing that he does that impresses me is that when I'm traveling with him, he pays his hotel bills. He will say, Pastor, we went to Maryland for many days. One week, he paid his hotel over hundred dollars a night. Almost twenty. He paid it. He didn't even ask me a question. We are traveling today. So, Father, are we going here? So you pay it. It is all part of service because he knows that what he's doing it is for God and not for man. He has never asked. I said, pick this man here. Pick this man. Pick. He will never ask, Pastor. Eh, please give money for gas. He does this with his hands. Amen. As you serve the Lord, may the Lord bless you. As you serve the Lord, may His face shine upon you. I pray that the Lord will reward you as you open your heart and you serve Him. Remember you. Yes. The Lord remembered Hezekiah's service. The Bible says when Hezekiah was told he was going to die, Hezekiah gave a reference of his service. What he was given was part of service. He said, Lord, I have served you. Yes. I don't deserve this. When you serve God, you have the authority to remind yeah. God. Can you need the reward at that time? And so he said, Lord, I don't know when you want to reward me, but I need this now no? because Father, I serve you. So don't give me. Hezekiah, because Hezekiah had an authentic reason. The Lord will have rewarded Hezekiah in different ways. But Hezekiah, because he has served, he called the shots. Somebody with your service, you can call the shots. I said, You will call the shots because you have served. Hezekiah said, I have served you, Lord. I don't know when you plan to reward me, but Father, I need it now. favor that whatever we are doing here may we never get weary yes. may no one stop us from seven may we do it from our hearts may the lord give us that idea that knowledge and that discernment that it is for him god and not for man in the name of jesus 
Hallelujah. Take your seats. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to take a, 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 an offering of service. Say an offering of service. Take an offering that will touch God this morning. If you are worshiping with us online, take a seed that will touch God. And you are saying, Father, I am also serving with my substance. Father, if you didn't never lift up your hand, the ushers will give you. If you want to sell, you can do that. If you want to give cash up, you can do that. The platform that you can give is on the screen. You can do that now. Mighty, mighty God. We worship you today. We give you all the praise as we lift our hands to you. With pleasures in our lives. you that when you are giving your offering online cash up there make sure you are, you will see rci letter ring don't just see rci just as i finished i go home one of our daughters in uh, washington state called pastor Platt, please i was sending my offering and i made a mistake i have sent it to another royal house chapel i said call them and bring it back <laughs> tell that the offering check i have realized that most of us have sent it somewhere yes i said it and the girl it was a lot of money he said pastor i made a mistake so make sure that you read it very well rci the lettering Ma betty has had that experience before so take your time don't just see rci the dollars and rci and click make sure that you see the lettering the lettering hallelujah this morning i want you to show your service to the lord through your tithes your tithe, the Bible says we should bring our tithe into the storehouse and prove him. Tithe is 10% of everything that you earn. If you are here, you are not tithing, then you are not serving. Tithe is part of service. Take that tithe and please come forward with your tithe wherever you are. If you are doing it online, make sure you see RCI, the letter rain center. You are bringing your tithe before the Lord. It's also part of service. Thank you very much. Lady Pastor Teresa Younger, a heart of service you have delivered with personal experience and examples. God richly bless you. You have shown that you really.
you, if you are giving your tithe online, make sure you write, you see RCI, the latter rain center. It's cash up. Make sure you confirm it before you click send. Lift up your thigh, those of you in front. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit these hands lifted unto you this morning. Father, I pray your, your mighty power and grace upon their lives. That these hands lifted, Father, for, will forever be lifted because God, you are going to put money in their Hallelujah. Next week, the 12th, we have royal women at the altar. And all women and even men are invited at 10, 10 a.m. Make sure that you are here as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. You are the prayer warrior of your family. Make sure that you are there. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, we are going to go out with the WMG. WMG. WMG WMG Oh, next week Saturday 2pm we are going for bowling Oh, I don't know Everybody is invited Last two years I was there It was powerful and I'm going again I'm going again That was my Betty's first time She threw the thing to the other Oh, it was very interesting So please let us all go there Let us go and um, enjoy ourselves it's 2 p.m. We're going to converge here. Then we all carpool and go. If you have not been to bowling before, then you're not in America. Make sure that you come and join and let's go and have fun. Hallelujah. As I said, we had 22 people inducted in office in Maryland. And I have the honor, the senior pastor, to introduce them to you. And the first on the list is our... Minister, Minister Tony Ose Owusu was promoted to senior minister. Senior minister. This is a man who has a heart of service. Since I came here, I took over this church. He has always been on my side. And uh, maybe I've not told the minister, Tony, somebody said he joined the church because of your dedication to me and the church. So he came here and I see you and your brother going back and forth. He said, no. The way these people are serving this man and the vision, it means there is something good in this place. Because he knows you, he knows your educational background, both of you. And if he sees what you are doing, he knows that then there's something good in it. There's a very intelligent man who's his master's in engineering and a lot of a lot of things, and is serving the vision. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Then we had. Lady Pastor 
There is a young from a deacon to a pastor. Also elevated to a deacon. Our chief usher, Mr. Divine Sekanku, was also elevated to a deacon. Mrs. Justin Dodu was also elevated to a deacon. Miss Adriana Mensa was also elevated to a deacon. Mrs. Angela elevated to a deacon. Mrs. Barbara Mensa Buafo was also elevated to a deacon. Was also elevated to a deacon. Miss Valencia Agodo elevated to a deacon. Valencia Adodombo elevated to a deacon. Miss Jane Dufo. Elevated to a deacon. Okay. Say Owusu elevated to a deacon. To a deacon. Emmanuel Hammond elevated to a deacon. Mr. Stephen Donko elevated to a deacon. Brother I and then our old Auntie Abigail. Church, you know we haven't had a point, we have not confirmed our appointment in a very, over, over 13 years. Since I came in here, we've never had this before. So these are people who have proved themselves and have served the vision diligently. And through prayer, we have selected them and they've been inducted into office. And I pray that you give them the support that they need to discharge their duties and do it well. And like our preacher said to the uh, new deacons and pastors, this is the time you need to work harder to prove that we didn't make mistakes, which I know we did not. To the glory of God. I pray the hand of the Lord upon you. As you serve, may the Lord serve you. Also keep your families for you. May the Lord protect your homes. Protect your children. Protect everything around you. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I'll invite Mama Betty, the pastors, ministers around to shake hands with them. Ministers, deacons, shake hands with them, pastors. Descending in this place to touch me.
Amen. Minister, let me share the grace with our online worshippers. And then lift up your hands wherever you are. Online worshippers, we want to thank you for joining us. We invite you to join us again, same time next week. But this Tuesday, we are having our Bible studies at 7.30. It's going to be on Zoom. The, 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 the flyer will be showing online for you. Make sure that you join us. Online worshippers, make sure that you join us. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. May his hand be upon you. May he show you favor. May grace be now for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's share the grace with them. Thank you very much, online worshipers. God bless you. Put your hands together.